Hello, my name is Henry and today I'm going to be doing a video on how to push from 7s and 8s to 9s in your GCSEs in the last month. So this video is going to be about what you actually need to do to get a 9 and to go from kind of the lower grades to the actual top grade, which is a grade 9. Just for a bit of context, anyone that is new here, I'm just, I got all nines in my GCSEs and I'm just, my channel is just about explaining that as best as I can. I'm going to be doing A-level content next year too, how to revise for that. I'm just currently doing my A-levels now. I'm in my second year, so please make sure you like and subscribe. And I've done loads of videos and I will continue to do loads of videos for GCSE help. Um, then my next few videos are going to be talking about kind of exam routine, stress, things like that. So make sure you're subscribed and turn the notifications on so you can receive these updates. Okay. So my first piece of advice is to trust the process. A lot of people kind of come to me and say like, oh, I'm on an eight, I'm on a seven. How can I push to a nine? And often the case is you just need to stick to what you're doing. You don't need to radically change anything. It's just about sticking to your revision process and staying consistent. So with maths, for example, I reached in year 11 a kind of flat line where I was like a seven, eight, and I found it really difficult to get onto a nine. I think I got an eight in my maths mock in January and a seven in November. Um, but the key was just to keep going. If, if you keep going and you keep working on things you're bad at and doing practice papers, it may seem like you're flatlining, but suddenly what, what happened to me anyway was the next set of papers I did, I just kind of shot up to a nine because you put in that foundation, that groundwork. And maths often requires that too, is that kind of level of low knowledge and stuff like that. So it takes time to fill the gaps in your knowledge. And I would say trusting the process is really important. So often to get a nine, you don't actually need to do anything crazy different. You just need to keep doing what you're doing and work on your flaws and keep improving. And that whole process will eventually get you to a nine. That's up with me in maths and almost all of my subjects too. Second piece of advice is to try grade nine questions. So for example, in maths paper, at the end of the paper, there are questions that are more difficult that if you want to, if you want a grade nine, you kind of need to be picking up these marks. So what I would do is I would Google on YouTube and I'm going to link this in the description at YouTube. If I had a, if I had, if I was struggling with something like probability, for example, at YouTube grade nine or difficult probability questions. And I use GCSE and maths tutor. That was the YouTube channel. And I will link that. And what they do is they go through some of the like hardest maths questions that you can do. And what I would do is I'd pause the video when they had the question on the screen. I would try the video myself on paper. Then I'd skip to the answer in the video. And if I got it right, I'd move on to the next question. If I got it wrong, I'd go back and watch the video and they'd explain it to me. So you can search like hardest maths questions GCSE or hardest science questions walk through GCSE, things like that. That really helped me, especially at the end. I watched a lot of those difficult questions videos just to push up and kind of see the um the difficult questions and i'm doing that with a levels currently i'm watching videos on the most difficult maths a level questions practicing them and seeing if i get them right so trying grade nine questions is really important and it does really help cgp also do some grade nine i had a couple of these it was like booklets like grade nine questions for the different sciences and i'd work through some of them especially for physics that really helped because in physics there's a lot of difficult maths questions and I think one of the questions that I did in the grade nine workbook kind of came up in the exam so that really helped me especially that's especially true for the the um, subjects like math the stem subject because there are like really difficult types of questions that can come up a bit less so in the humanities but that YouTube method was really helpful for me so my third tip is for humanities now you need to be going above and beyond so something like history, I learned a lot of extra knowledge. Like I would be looking for extra facts, extra flashcards, extra figures that I would learn. And having this extra knowledge, just, you know, a bit above what is needed is really helpful for getting a nine. Same with English. Try and go out there and Google like English grade nine analytical words or English grade nine words and learn some vocabulary, learn some fancy kind of analysis words. So I remember learning something called tag questions which is when a small question is answered at the end of a sentence, asked at the end of a sentence. And having that sort of level of analytical knowledge is really useful because it also helps you being versatile because you can spot more techniques, but also it just sounds more impressive to the examiner. So go, go away and Google that. So things like semantic field, all those kind of techniques. And I can try and find something and link it in the description too. So check the description for that. But going above and beyond is really important. I did this for geography too. I learned a lot of key facts and figures for the case studies, and that really helps me. Finally, is practice questions. So it's really important to know where you're at pretty consistently. Um, 
by doing lots of practice papers. So in maths, still do practice papers. That will help you push onto a nine. The more you do, the better you get, the more likely you are to get a nine. The same with science. Every subject, practice questions are useful. For the humanities, to really push onto that nine in things like English, that's what I would recommend strongly, is doing practice questions, handing them to your teacher, getting the marks back to you, and working on that feedback. That will help you get to a nine, because each time the teacher, hand, especially for the 40 mark stories, because each time the teacher hands it back to you, you'll have some feedback, you'll work on that, you'll improve it, and you'll hand it back in. So what I did was, I, I in English, I came up with about two or three stories that I could adapt to use in the exam. And I worked on these stories throughout the kind of last few months. So originally, when I first wrote it, one of my stories was about someone going on a run, basically. And when I first wrote it, I think it was about 30 out of 40 marks. So it's good, but not quite the level I wanted to guarantee and help me get a nine. But what I did was I rewrote it, I handed it in, and after about three or four attempts, eventually I had a story that was 40 out of 40 marks. And what I did was I went into the exam and I adapted that story and wrote it in the exam. And I know that I, I knew that it was high marks because my teacher had marked a very similar story. So that would be my advice in terms of getting a nine, just my kind of tips and practical tips for the last few months, uh, which I think is the best thing I could do to help you is just offer my specific tips. So I'd recommend doing all of that. Hopefully I've covered most of the subjects, what you can do to actually get a nine. Often though, it's just about trusting the process. It's just about keep revising, trying to keep that motivation up. There's only like a month left now, but just getting the practice in, looking at grade nine, on um, example questions as well as something that's just popped into my head so i'd google like grade nine history answers or try ask your teachers for any exemplar work anything like that um you can email me henry at brand.uk.net if that helps and i may be able to send you some example answers or anything like that so i hope that was helpful please comment any questions you have please remember to subscribe and also you can still email me any questions you have as well if you want a bit more detail or you want to book a one-to-one -one tutoring or mentoring session Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.